Good morning, Christ Church at the Grove. If you would, um, feel free to worship our God. That's what we are here for this morning. He is truly a God worth worshiping.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm Pastor Ben. I want to welcome each and every one of you here today to Christ Church at the Grove. Amen. How many of you are awake? Folks, you got that extra hour, what you do with it, but none. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, uh, I'm about ready to start preaching already just from this uh, initial song, but I'm going to hold off. But folks, I want you to declare uh, together with me, I am a child of light. Let me hear you. I am a child of light. Amen. We can mess with the clocks, and we do. And uh, it's interesting, if you look at the history of daylight savings time, which just ended, we're now on standard time. But the whole idea really was savings. To try to work the clock in such a way that it would have actually economic benefits. So that it is properly named Daylight Savings Time. Of course, there's nowadays a big debate about whether it really saves anything or just complicates things. I am glad that I know the light, and the light that I'm talking about has saved me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I hope that you're able to rejoice today with us all in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of us are a little more exuberant. And demonstrative. Some of us are a little more quiet and meditative. Uh, the good news is it all works. As long as it's from your heart here today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as we are led in worship by our musicians and singers, the main thing is that you feel after him. Because the scripture tells us he's not far from any one of us. And if you are a believer, actually, he travels within you. Wherever you go, he goes. Yes. You may not always be cognizant of him. But, oh, but if you're a believer, he's in there. Amen. Right. Amen. This is a good place to let Christ shine. Hallelujah. So with that, allow me to pray. Amen. And then we will enter into our time of worship. And if you want to stand or sit uh, or you want to um, raise your hands or lift up your voices, or if you just want to praise him quietly, amen. Jesus, we thank you, our Savior. You are the light. You are the truth. You're the way. And uh, Lord, we are uh, secure, Lord, in you today by our faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you, dear God, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your presence within every believer. Uh, Lord, we need uh, to sense that presence today. And uh, Lord, with it, Savior, comes your power. With it, dear God, comes your leading and your guiding. And uh, Lord, oh, how we need those things. So, Savior, we pray that you would be with us collectively. Lord, as we know that you are in us individually. Lord, we pray a blessing upon Kimballsville United Methodist Church as they worship upstairs and uh, Lord, just have your way with each and every person that's in this room today. Lord, may every one of us receive what you want to give us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Folks, enjoy yourself in worship. God's creation, all the different colors, and sometimes we have to stop ourselves and see what God has done. When we stop, we have to take time, and when we take that time, God blesses because we acknowledge who He is, what He's done, and what He's doing. Amen? Amen. All of creation, all of the earth. Make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint. Let every nation 
Jesus. 
long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Folks, I hope that you have felt the presence of the Lord already. Amen. I know that God still has more for us here in our service, but I just love basking in his presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, you guys get ready. Here we are in November. And, uh, you know, here come the, uh, the, some holy days. We call them hot, holidays. Amen. And I, the older I get, the more I, I strive to make them not hectic days. Some people might as well just call it for what it is. They become the hectic days. And at that point, you're doing something wrong. You need to reconsider, you know, your activity level and, and what you're truly shooting for. If the holy days are simply becoming the hectic days. Okay, we have our share of things going on here at Christ Church at the Grove, and we put out the announcement sheet, and I can tell you there's quite a few announcements, uh, there's, you know, front and back, amen, your space for notes is getting smaller, <laughs> but um, you guys, I do want to acknowledge um, our hospitality ministry uh, that has been such a blessing to all of us at different times through 2023. This afternoon, uh, after our service, they're having a, a little celebra celebratory luncheon. So we rejoice with Jetta, with Deanna, as our ministry leaders, and they know all those. And I, uh, amen, I know you invited them to the luncheon. <laughs> okay, so um, if you smell something in the air, okay, that's their lunch. <laughs> If you would like to participate next year in the luncheon, you must participate in the hospitality ministry through the course of the year. Amen. Okay. Um, this afternoon at five o'clock, for those of you who are what we call college and career age, and uh, Wanda, tell me that age again, from graduates, high school graduates to more or less 30... 30-something-ish, okay? They know who they are. If you fit that category, we would love to have you at the Quintana home. The address is there as Rebecca and my wife are the ministry leaders, and they're going to have communion, really nice communion, <laughs> okay, at our house. You guys, be aware that this year on Sunday, the 19th, we will be doing our service along with Kimballsville United Methodist. They are upstairs worshiping right now. This will be our first combined service. Uh, we've been together now to, uh, three years, and um, we want to do, in honor of God, blessing our congregation and theirs through the shared uh, benefits of this facility. Uh, so that day, we will be together with them. They will join us here. We will do something uh, unique because it will have a little flavor of them and a little flavor of us. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Later on that evening on the 19th, it's the next announcement there, we will be joining the larger community of Avangrove churches that will be uh, celebrating Thanksgiving together at Cornerstone Presbyterian, which is right up the road. And we're super excited about doing it, uh, you guys. And also that Lampstand Collective, the, that group of young adults that so longs to see the Christian community come together in worship. They will be a part of, of, of that service, okay? 
So I'm just letting you know that on that day, it'll be a very special Sunday, both in the morning and in the evening. And I just saw one of the announcements on the backside for the ladies. You guys, I think, are going to be doing, is that the day you do some decorating or something? Yeah, on the 19th. So that'll be a busy day. All righty. Uh, you guys, that we have a weekly prayer night now. On Monday night, from 7 to 8, more or less, you're, any, anyone who's in here is welcome to come. Uh, there's some other folks outside of our church that come, and uh, we're, we're just praying, amen, because we need God in every area of life. So it, that's just a prayer time, okay? And um, you're welcome to join us on Wednesday. We have our regular Bible study time. That's, just, that's an emphasis on learning God's Word. Okay, but we do it every Wednesday, and uh, so there's some youth activities, amen, a gathering at the Hadsicks where they're going to really celebrate communion, likewise, like the uh, uh, young adults will at the Quintanas today. Um, on the backside, ladies, there's some upcoming events, all righty, so don't miss out for not knowing they're written on your announcement sheet. God bless. Uh, with that, I am going to, uh, you guys probably try to every Sunday this month, assuming my memory doesn't fail me, uh, have at least one person to share a Thanksgiving. Okay? So it, this flows pretty naturally because Jetta Pierce had asked me if she could uh, give thanks. Jetta, if you'll come forward, and if you would like to, because you feel strongly that God has something for you to share with the congregation, uh, we'll try to fit you in on a given Sunday this month, okay? With that, Jetta, let's use the yellow one. Amen. Okay, I'm going to read something that I have written. Um, dear family and friends at CCG, we want to thank you, take this time to say thank you so much for your outpouring of love during this very difficult time. Losing Angie has not been easy on us, as many of you know, because you have lost loved ones as well. As Christians, we have hope. That is Amen. God's a gift and promise to us. It doesn't mean we don't hurt. Right. We all hurt when we lose someone we love. The comfort comes from knowing that one day we will be together again with our loved ones in heaven. Our family is sharing very fond memories of Angie with each other and knowing that the days ahead will be rough. We find peace in knowing Angie loved Christ and is with him. Praise God. Each of you have been so kind to us, and we ask that you continue to keep us in your thoughts and prayers. A special thank you to our greeters, Kathy and Sandra. You were so helpful in taking care of greeting everyone. Mike, Mary, Mackenzie, thank you so much for the beautiful music and songs. Pastor Ben, your message was oh, very God good. Bless. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank you. Sally, the flowers were perfect. Caitlin, Amen. Justin, I thank you. The video, the pictures, and the songs. What a tribute. Thank you. Amen. To our wonderful hospitality team, and there's many of you, okay? Your Christ love shines through your work. Amen. Okay? We right. are truly blessed here at CCJ. To everyone that helped with bringing food, thank you. Mm -hmm. Each of you made celebrating Angie's life a beautiful day, and she would say, good job, folks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Praise what she would God. say. I thank you to those who helped in other ways, and you know who you are. Mm -hmm. We love you, and we thank you. Thank everyone for your help with love from all of Angie's family. God bless you, Jenna. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. For those of you who may not be aware, Ajeda uh, lost her younger sister uh, unexpectedly. And um, Ajeda, now you know the value of hospitality. I'm reminded of how beautiful it is to, to share with others uh, in that ministry of hospitality, as well as everything else that the church did, you guys. Um, amen. So again, if you, think, if you think you'd like to come and, and just give thanks to God, uh, let me know and we'll see how many we have and how much I can share mic, the mic time with you. All righty? Um, you guys, thank you to, to those who uh, ministered to Vernon last week. Uh, Vernon is here this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Vernon, fe- feeling pretty good right now? Are you feeling all right? Awesome. Okay. You guys, we will be working on, uh, you know, the idea that things could happen here of an emergency nature. And I, I thank God for those of the, you that know what to do by your profession. Um, and we want to keep working and tweaking it, making th- that better. Thank you for those who were here for the AED training last week. Amen. It's one of those things that you get trained in, and then you hope you never have to use it, but you never know. Okay? And amen. I think we're going to go ahead and pray then. All righty, folks. We've been privileged to praise the Lord. To give thanks for all that he has done. And uh, now we're going to pray and petition the Lord. Because how many of you have something that you need God's touch in today? Or maybe tomorrow? I always do. I used to feel sheepish. When I was younger, we would praise the Lord. No sooner was I done praising the Lord than I was thinking about, Lord, I sure could use your help in so-and-so. And And it made me feel like, I don't know, like I was treating God like a genie, I guess. But folks, the scripture tells us that he wants us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. You know, I love doing for my family. Because I care for them. And while it is true that it diminishes me sometimes in time and resources, I told myself, wait a second. God is never diminished. You know, that's why we feel sheepish sometimes when we ask for help and no sooner does someone help us then we don't want to just throw it out again. Can you help me again? You know, acknowledging that it costs somebody. That would not be true of God. He's not diminished. So folks, what a privilege we have. Even as we have thanked him for many things. To now say, but Lord, today I need help. <laughs> in such and such an area of my life. Amen? Amen. So precious Lord, here we come. Lord, each of us in our own way, Lord, we are thankful, dear God. We have met, it, Lord, that we are so thankful for all that you have already done for us. Lord, we are especially thankful for the gift of faith, Lord, that brings the gift of salvation. Lord, to be able to place our faith and and to openly identify with you, oh Lord, that we might have Christ on the inside. Uh, But Lord, that, that, that does not change the fact that we are still part of a fallen world. And Lord, that uh, there's so many needs uh, in our lives and in the world around us. Amen, Lord. We pray, dear God, even for some of the big problems of the world, Lord. These uh, wars, uh, Lord, in the Middle East, the the war in Eastern Europe. And Lord, sometimes, again, feeling sheepish that we're so blessed. 
Lord, that we can gather here and we're not concerned that this building is going to be bombed. Uh, Lord, help us, Lord, to pray for peace, to pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, while it is true, dear God, that we are just little individuals and sometimes we wonder, uh, you know, what does it matter? Uh, Lord, we're going to stand upon your word. Lord, that where two or three are gathered together in your name. Lord, that you are in our midst and that whatsoever they ask for uh, shall be done for them of the Father in heaven. Lord, that's what the message declares. So, Savior, we thank you for this privilege, dear God, of praying. Uh, Lord, both big prayers and, Lord, maybe what we consider little prayers. Lord, maybe help with the bill that we're not sure we have the funds to cover. Lord, uh, prayer regarding decisions. Uh, Lord, of every kind. Dear God, for those that are ill in their bodies. Lord, I thank you, dear God, that Vernon is here and worshiping you today. Uh, Lord, thank you, dear God, for caring for him again. Lord, uh, hear the names right now, Lord, a, a bunch of individual names, Lord, of loved ones, of co-workers, family members, Lord, that we know they need your help. Savior, thank you for being so faithful. Lord, that is why we are here today, because you are so faithful. So, Lord, as you've done in our yesterdays, even so do today, O oh Lord. And Savior, even into our tomorrows, and Lord, some things that uh, aren't even here before us, but they, they encroach, Lord, upon us. They affect us even already today. Lord, help us not to be overcome, uh, Lord, with the tomorrows, but uh, Lord, we entrust even future things, dear God, into your hands. Again, Lord, all we can say is thank you for being so faithful. It gives us hope, dear God, that all will be well. Hallelujah. So with that, dear God, let we just uh, love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen and amen. Praise God. Folks, we're going to uh, receive our offering. Uh, if you came prepared today to give, uh, most of you know we have the round table in the back that you're always welcome either before or after the service if uh, you prefer not to march. Uh, but we like to bring our offering unto the Lord. For us, it is an act of worship. And um, with that, I'm going to ask our ushers to uh, get ready. Thank you, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Normally we have younger people, but we, uh, I've just been reminded that we're children of the light. <laughs> Amen. That's right. So, folks, they have the uh, tithe and offering basket. I'm holding Compassion International. Anything you put in here will go to uh, that organization. Let us stand. And there is an usherette coming down the middle aisle. She'll motion to you. And uh, you come down the middle, the side aisles, across the front, and back up the middle. God bless you. A little tired of the devil's games, keeping me in bondage to my sorrows and pains. I can live better, I won't go another day. I'm here to claim the liberance in Jesus' name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Fresh on me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's all over me. Now I have royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the King, and I've been buried in His name. There's no devil that can come against me. I 
I've been blessed, I've been born, I have been set free. I feel the joy of the Lord for me, crash on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, folks, a long time ago, we had a gentleman, and uh, he came up to me after being with us for some time, and he said that he would be leaving because everybody was happy and he wasn't. And, and I remember having to say to him, well, number one, not everybody's as happy as they appear, <laughs> but number two, you would do good to try to get yourself involved in that joy rather than retract from it. So folks, let me say, everyone in this room has situations that you would wish were different. And you will until the day you die. Don't let it stop you from participating in the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because that, that broke my heart when that gentleman told me that. Okay. Amen. It's so good to see. There's many of you I haven't seen here for a while. Uh, and I don't want to start singling you out. <laughs> but we're so happy to have all of you. With that, we are going to dismiss now our youth and children's ministry and nursery, nursery ministry. Um, it is your option whether or not you send your kids, but there is an age-appropriate group for them, and they'll receive a teaching a little bit more in keeping with their age. Okay? Amen. You more mature people get to stay in here with me. All righty? And if you'll turn in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. I already mentioned earlier, you guys, and you're very aware of it. As a matter of fact, I, you know, I've, with daylight savings time and, you know, the, the change. Uh, how many of you have a little bit of trouble adjusting for a day or two or three or four? Do some of you have a trouble yeah, okay. It's kind of interesting to me because I hear on the news, uh, you know, that it's problematic for some. It's not for me. I'm a good sleeper. One hour difference don't matter too much to me when I just... I find it easier to set the clock before I go to sleep, you know. I mean, who would wake up at two o'clock to put it back to one? Or, or wake up and be confused. It's easy for that to happen, you guys. Why are you waiting until the morning to start dealing with it when you could have said it the night before and you'll be right on track, possibly? It's a hard phenomenon to miss. <laughs> Though I've known some people that it took them halfway through the new day to realize they were on the wrong time. Namely, my brother, who was supposed to meet me for lunch <laughs> several years ago. And there is big discussion, you guys, all the time. Every time it comes around, it becomes a discussion because its validity is uncertain anymore. 
And how many of you know that there are certain states in the United States that don't even observe it? Right? They don't bother with the change. So, you know, you better know, you know, when you're flying there, they're one of those states that is actually on a different time at certain times. But you guys, I, you know, I understand the, the effort to some degree. Um, but the truth of the matter is we really can't do a whole lot about time except cooperate with it. You know, we play these little games of changing in uh, time. And um, it had me thinking throughout the week from... Uh, about this concept, and that is the idea that we are children of the light. Amen. So, you know, that's my little theme for today. I hope you you think about it some. When at 5 o'clock today, (laughs) you (laughs) you think you're getting ready for bed, and you better look at the clock and say, no, it's not time. Children of the light. There are various portions of scripture that talk about, in significant ways, the, the idea of light and God. You know, as a matter of fact, if, you know, I, I, you know uh, in the very beginning, uh, you know, the, the, God speaks. And what's the first thing he brings forth? It's light. Right? In Genesis? It's interesting. Light is, um, um, can only kind of be understood by a contrast of some kind to shades of darkness or shades of greater light. How many of you go into the Philadelphia Zoo and you, you walk into, um, boy, I forget what that exhibit is called, but they have the little naked Rat moles or something. In a, in a glass display case so that you can see all their tunnels. How many know the little critter I'm talking about? Lives all its life underground. And no hair, which makes them not real cute. And their eyes are sealed closed. They have eyes, but they're still closed. And they never see the light of day. Ephesians chapter 5. Children of the light. It's a pretty exhaustive little section here. So hang, hang in there with me for the reading of a number of verses here in Ephesians chapter 5. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. Folks, as a father, I can tell you that I hope my girls in various ways are a chip off the old block. Amen. Uh, my daughter Lisette just this week was questioning certain bills. Those bills aren't, even, aren't due until uh, weeks from now. But just like good old dad, she knows she got some bills coming. And that she doesn't want to wait until the, it gets too close. Follow God's example. Why? Because you're dearly loved children. And our Heavenly Father, He likes it when you look like Him. Amen. And you walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering. And sacrifice to God. So our elder brother, Jesus Christ, son of God, uh, likewise followed the example. 
Amen. God is a giver, a sacrificial giver. And if we're going to follow after him, you guys, we're going to be givers. Sacrificial givers. Verse 3, but among you, and here starts a contrast. Because it's going to end up being a discussion about light. And that brings up the issue of darkness. Verse 3, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Not even a hint. If you're going to be a genuine child of God following his example. Or of any kind of impurity. Or of greed. Folks, and someone said that the greatest uh, spiritual battle that we as Americans fight is materialism. <laughs> and every seasonal, you know, this time of year, people start going into greater debt. Over stuff that ain't going to last real long. But your debt of it will. And that, you guys, is some form of greed. Biblically speaking. So there must not be these things. Why? Because of our desire to be more God-like and less human-like. Because these are improper. Everybody say improper. He's not right for God's holy people. And folks, I know the word holy isn't thrown around a lot in our society. But it's still in the word of God. Be ye therefore holy because he is holy. The scripture declares. And these things that he just named are not proper for God's holy people. And we are serving a holy God who wants us to be like him. I thank God for his understanding, his patience, his mercy, and his grace. Because there isn't anyone anywhere that has hit the mark every single time in every act of your life. Folks, all of us have fallen short. But all of us ought to be trying a little bit harder. Amen. Okay? It's going to go so far now as to go into an area that, um, you know, whereas there were some pretty heavy-duty actions, uh, you know, immorality, impurity, greed... In verse 4, it's still in the same vein, except that it's targeting your speech. Which most of us would not put in this category of some of these other heavy-duty problems. But here it comes. Nor should there be obscenity. That that's a speech problem. A communication problem, obscenity. Foolish talk. Eat gads. <laughs> How many of you know I'm a talker? Oh, some of you suffer. Brother Ben can talk about anything. And loves it. And God forbid he should get together with certain other talkers in this congregation. <laughs> And someone who is not as much of a talker would be wondering, you know, why are you even talking about that? Folks, I'm not here to judge foolish talk, per se. 
because all of us need recreation and whatnot and release and uh, you know, talking to someone and they were letting off steam. How many of you know that venting is a good thing? Amen. Folks, if you don't vent every so often, you might blow up. That's why there's a vent, you know, release things on a lot of, uh, even a gas can, okay? But how many of you know that too much venting is not good for you? All right, so so it is with some, you know, this idea of um, obscenity, foolish talk, or listen to this, coarse joking. Uh Uh-oh. Because let's face it, folks, our society will let you get by with a lot if you'll say, well, I'm just joking. Well, it makes the list. Coarse joking is improper for God's holy people. So as I must figure that out, so should you. Which are out of place. They're, These things are out of place. For whom? For those who are trying to follow God. Example. I like this, but rather thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And that's why I love and my favorite holiday, for the most part, at least in terms of practice, is probably thanksgiving. You know, for for all my life, thanksgiving has meant pretty much just a, a nice time together with family and friends. And everyone... Stops all the venting for a little while and focuses on what they do have rather than what they don't have. Folks, that's the key to Thanksgiving is focus on what you do have instead of so much focus on what you don't have. And you'll find Thanksgiving coming more naturally. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, and those correlates to those three things that we had talked about earlier, Uh, such a person is an idolater. That is, uh, you know, uh, uh, up there high on the Ten Commandments list. You know, almost one, two, and three is keep God separate from everything else, don't have anything on par with him, that becomes an idol, and, and that's displeasing to God. But n- none of these persons has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So let no one deceive you with empty words. The people at, at, at this place called Ephesus, and they're known as the Ephesians, uh, uh, and it's early Christianity, but there was people coming in and, and having certain teachings that what you do in the physical realm doesn't matter as much because we're now in the spirit realm. So as long as you're good in the spirit realm, it's all, you, you can kind of do whatever you want in the physical realm. Uh, folks, that's why he says, let no one deceive you with empty words. And, and we have no lack of mental gymnastics in our day and time. Twisted thinking. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Why, folks? Because that's the dark side. And this is what he's working himself up to, the Apostle Paul, for you were once darkness. Whoops. You know, sometimes we can become so critical, you would think that at one time we weren't part of them. But folks, all of us have come out of darkness All of us in, uh, are forgiven sinners. You know, sometimes it, we shouldn't be so surprised. We could be shocked, I guess, but not surprised. At what other people are doing. For you were once darkness... 
But now you are light in the Lord. And I thank God for that status change. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. This is the stuff that now emanates from a child of light. And, and, you, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness that he had been talking about, but rather expose them. We expose them, folks, really by being light. But by showing the other side of the dark side, which would be the light side. That's all you have to do. You don't have to be overly critical or anything. You just have to be different. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. Uh, this is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. I'm so glad that someone brought the message of hope to me in the form of Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember being in darkness. I was pretty young, but I, still, I remember. I remember being without hope into eternity. I thank God at age 16 that someone said to me, Ben, wake up. <laughs> wake up, old sleeper. Because that's what we like to do in the dark. We, one of the, that's when we sleep best. We're just unaware. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. There goes that contrast. The unwise correlates to darkness. The wise correlates to Light, making the most of every opportunity. Folks, every day we're confronted with fresh opportunities to live wise or unwise, to live in the light rather than in the darkness, to live in the way of life rather than in the way of death. We don't lack opportunity. Every day we have fresh opportunity. Because the days are evil. Verse 17 says, therefore, do not be foolish. And, and you know, foolishness versus wisdom. Uh, but understand what the Lord's will is. Folks, that's, there's a lot there. And you can go home and read it some more. Today would be a good day, seeing how it's daylight, say, uh, day, you know, the switch. You know, it actually, daylight saving times ends, and we're on standard time. Um, how many of you find it easier to walk in the light rather than in the dark? Just naturally. I do. Um, folks, let me, let me just point out a couple more things of, of, of these verses that I've read. Number one, I love right off the bat where he, he calls these Ephesians dearly loved children. They had already received Christ. Um, their positional status had been changed. Uh, that's why he was able to say to them, you were once darkness. But now you're in the light. Um, While so much of this does include our actions, the idea of being a child of the light is a question of who we are. It's a question of our identity. It's like a, a parent um, that says to their child, and this was more common, I think, when I was a child, but nonetheless, you'd hear stuff, my mom would say stuff like, hey, you're a Quintana. Right? How many can remember your parent kind of reminding you something about who you are? And, and, and trusting that it was going to affect, therefore, how you act. Uh, folks, that's why he called them. He was not berating. He's not saying, so you're lost. 
He's saying, rather, you are now a child of light. Act like it. Live in it. Walk in the way. And that's why he went into some specifics. Specifics about what is part of the realm of darkness. So that he could, uh, um, you know, uh, highlight the way of the light. And, 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 and in our actions, you guys, there are two categories. There are things that we don't do. But then there are things that we do. Because of being in the light. It involves avoiding the works of darkness, but more importantly, you guys, it actively, we become engaged in the works of light. Uh, Christianity is sometimes, by some people, criticized because it seems like uh, to them that, uh, you know, we're, we're just against so much. Folks, we don't want to be known just for what we're against. We want to be known and emphasize what we are for. Amen. Our way of life leads to light and greater life. We want to be careful, you guys, to daily intentionally and purposefully commit our actions to God's will. That's what it means to walk in the light. Let me read a story of darkness to you. And show you what light looks like in the midst of it uh, from Luke chapter 10. Famous little story. It was a made up story that Jesus gave to, to illustrate um, and answer a question. And the, and the question that was asked of Jesus, well, is who is my neighbor? And the reply is the famous Good Samaritan story. Found in verse 30 that a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. Uh, they stripped him of his clothes, they beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. That is a crime scene. That is ugly. That is the way of darkness. Correct? I mean, that's a, that, you, you've been mugged and attacked at the same time to the point that you are um, um, half naked, beat up, and, uh, and half dead. Not sure how you measure that, but nonetheless, it don't sound good. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, pass by on the other side. And, uh, you know, I know that we can all go, oh, that's terrible. Folks, we're actually advised now to go on the other side. If you're riding in your car and you're on a lonely road and all of a sudden there's some staggering person or maybe off to the side all bloodied up you're not supposed to engage that person 
You're supposed to call 911. At the very least, there's a thing called secure the perimeter. In other words, you're going to get out of that car. You better, you better be ready in case all is not as it seems to be. In other words, that it's a setup. How many of you are familiar with that stuff? Yeah, it's, it's kind of bothersome, isn't it? The, the Levite and the priest, uh, they saw something that they didn't want to be a part of. It looked scary. And a bit ugly and messy. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, uh, took pity. And King James called it compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Thank God it wasn't a setup. Okay, thank God it wasn't a setup. But this man was moved. Something moved him in this story. You guys, and, and, and therein lies a critical uh, um, element, and that is God's leading. God's leading. But he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. That's money. Uh, Look after him, he said, and when I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense that you might have. And that was the end of the story. Um, But you guys, not only was it a a scary, messy crime scene, um, there's the issue of what's all this going to cost you? In other words, if you're going to be involved, all of a sudden, there's costs involved. For the Good Samaritan, um, just, you know, lost time. You guys, uh, in many scenarios, we don't become involved simply because of the time that it's going to cost us. You know, we've got full schedules. And if we get involved in something that we weren't planning on, it throws and has a domino effect. Correct? It's going to cost our resources. You know, this good Samaritan, he, 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 he was prepared. He had a little first aid kit. Uh, he didn't think he was going to have to be, you know, a, a doctor. Uh, it was probably like a personal little kit. But now he's using it up. So it cost him time. It cost him his scheduling. Uh, uh, it cost him his schedule. And, and it's, it's cost him bandages, oil, wine. It's cost him his transportation. He had a donkey. Chances are he was riding the donkey. But because of his involvement, his sensing to be involved, he now... Um, has lost transport. He's now walking the donkey, which has this man on it. And uh, there's the issue of, of, of coming to an inn where the man spends a night with the hurt man. Maybe he, he, realized, you know, he needs tended to. And, no one, you know, and I'm the one, I'm going to tend to him. But with that, he's already incurred a two nights cost at an inn. And then there's the scariest part of it all, and that is that he says to the innkeeper, oh, by the way, I, you know, I'm going to continue on, but I'll come back. But I want you to care for this person, and whatever it costs, when I come back, I'll cover it. Folks, let's say, be honest with ourselves. That's kind of scary to us.
Verse 37, the expert, in, Jesus asked the question, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Expert in the law was able to pay, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. Folks, we're being called to be the good Samaritan. To, um, to be willing, though we're not of the world, to be willing to step into scenarios of the world and to bring the light with us. Because it is dark and ugly and scary over here. (laughs) And our valid concerns and observations about the darkness must be overridden by our greater concern to walk in the light of the Father's will. That's the difference maker. Something within that man that had pity or compassion, that was the little light shining. And at that point, he, he, he had trust. And again, I can't tell you exactly the when and the, and, and the what and the how and of all your life. Part of it is you must figure it out in the moment. But I can tell you now that you need to understand that you are a child of the light and that light is resident within you and wants to illuminate your path and the path of those whose paths you cross. Scary as that might be. Costly. Costly as it may be. Because I had a my former pastor, he used to, during offering time, he used to have this cute little saying that always stuck with me. He would pray, and he'd say, Lord, help them to know how much you want them to give. Because um, if they give any more than that, Lord, um, they won't be happy. But if they give any less than that, then the Lord won't be happy. Folks, there's a sensitivity issue in our lives that we have to figure out almost on the run. But it starts with acknowledging who you are and what you've been called to. How many of you know it is the will of God that if you are a child of God, That you live by the light and you walk in the light. Are you willing to acknowledge that much? Amen. Because if if you're not, you're really going to struggle. It starts with that acknowledgement. Let me close with this reading from uh, 1 Thessalonians. Okay, chapter 5. And there's so many scriptures, and we can go on for a long, long, long time. But here goes another little several verses trying to remind us for our own sake and for the sake of those around us. 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning at chapter 5. Ye are all children of the light and children of the day. And when he says all, he's talking about those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay? We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober, alert. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. And you guys, it's amazing. How many of you know that between 12 midnight and 5 a.m., not too much good happens? I mean, this is just a no-brainer to me. When when we're going to stop kidding ourselves that in the pitch darkness, mostly what happens is bad stuff. Unless you work third shift. (laughs) 
<laughs> Your paycheck's dependent on it. I get it. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Because I am so glad that I recognize myself to be a child of the light. Amen. It causes me to want to live more like a child of light. Because I am a child of light in God's sight. And I know that the potential is so great within me. If I could get my little fleshly self out of the way and let that light shine. Because the outcome is that my life is blessed. And the life of those around me are blessed. Isn't that beautiful? Makes me want to be more walking in the light. I am a child of light. I need to walk like a child of light. Let us stand. Thank you, God. Folks, Satan will have a heyday with you if you don't realize that by position, you are a child of light. Truth of the matter is, he can point out things to you, sometimes things you rather ignore, but Satan will come around and he'll say, oh yeah, how about this, 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 and the other? <laughs> and you know what you need to do right around that time is say, thank you, Satan, for pointing out some of the things that I need to work, out, work on. Amen. And then say, Jesus, help me, because Satan is right. As a child of light, I should not be ding, 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 ding. Help me, Lord. And then when you take care of the ding, 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 Satan will get finer on you. <laughs> Amen? Right? The longer you walk with him, the more some things, oh gosh, you know, they, but folks, that is God's will for your life, that you are a child of light and that you walk, amen, as a child of light, even in your speech. Hallelujah. Precious Lord, uh, we say thank you to you, Lord, for our wonderful time together here today. Lord, thank you that uh, we know enough, Lord, to want to be present among God's people Lord, that we might be sharpened and, Lord, maybe sharpen one of our brothers and sisters. Uh, Lord, today, mostly, we want to thank you for speaking light into our lives. Lord, granted, it, 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 it has to dispel the darkness. Lord, ultimately, you know what's best for us. Say you forgive us, dear God, that we're not always at our very best. But Lord, today we acknowledge that since we have placed our faith in you, we have become children of the light. And Lord, we know it is your will that we purposefully and intentionally, on a daily basis, walk in the light. That will cause us to be more holy, Lord, even as you are perfectly holy. Lord, we acknowledge that we fall short of it, but Lord, we're pressing towards the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We want to be more like you, Lord. So help us, dear God, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Folks, God bless each and every one of you all day long. Remind yourself that you are a child of the light and that you desire to walk in that light. God bless you.